Hello, I'm Dr. Greg Moore, a research professor at the University of New Hampshire, and I'm here with Frank Drzewski. Well, hello everyone. My name is Frank Drzewski, and I am the deputy refuge manager of this uh, beautiful place. This is Parker River National Wildlife Refuge. The salt marsh is, uh, is being threatened right now, and it's being threatened by a number of invasive plants. Uh, Phragmites is probably our number one uh, enemy here on, on the salt marsh. And there's a number of others, but I think we're going to focus on talking about Phragmites today. Oh, a little bit about myself. I've been with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service almost 34 years now, and at Parker River for 21 years. So I really have seen some changes uh, over that time. Some of those changes, the uh, invasives that have uh, come into the salt marsh, things that we're trying to control. What are the uh, key wildlife benefits to Great Marsh that we're trying to protect? Well, I mean, the Great Marsh is, a, is the largest contiguous salt marsh north of Long Island. It's approximately 20,000 acres, and it, it's a diverse habitat, as you, know, as you know and as I know, and as a lot of the visitors that come here to take advantage of the birding opportunities. It's a very diverse habitat. So it, it, there's so much bang for the buck out here. There's so many species that benefit from, from finfish to shellfish to uh, uh, invertebrates to... Uh, uh, you name it. I mean, the, the species out here are, are, are totally dependent on this habitat type. And uh, it's, it's critical for uh, those species to continue. And it also provides a lot of benefits for us as a species also. If you were to see a, a red-winged blackbird in a, in a Phragmites patch, how is that different than what we really want in a native marsh system? Again, I'm going to go back to the diversity. Uh, if, if Phragmites was the only plant out here, uh, a lot of the species wouldn't be able to use this habitat. Salt marsh sparrows, which are in jeopardy, uh, they nest out here. They're a salt marsh obligate, which means that they spend their entire life uh, cycle out here in the salt marsh. And if this entire salt marsh was Phragmites, they wouldn't be able to use this habitat. Parker River Refuge is, is noted as one of the 10 most popular birding spots in the country. And we have people uh, that come here specifically just to go birding. We have a bird list that has over 300 species of birds on it that have been documented you know, over the years. And, we have regulars that come here to see birds, and they're always seeing something special for, for people that really like to bird. And uh, it's something that uh, is important here in the salt marsh to, to maintain the diversity so those species you know, can continue. Uh, I believe totally that if the uh, Phragmites were to take uh, control of the salt marsh, that uh, you wouldn't see near as many species out here. And that would be sad. In the wintertime, a lot of folks come down here to see the snowy owl, rough-legged hawk, and some other raptors that uh, appear here in the wintertime. So every season of the year, there are you know, special times. And the, uh, the spring, obviously, is the, is the warbler migration. And uh, we also get tree swallows that come in by the tens of thousands. Uh, they come in a little bit less in the spring, and then in the fall, like right now, uh, we'll get tree swallows you know, by the tens of thousands. Uh, and of course, in the fall, we get the waterfowl migration which is another important uh, aspect of the refuge to provide areas for waterfowl hunters to, uh, you know, to uh, do, their, do their thing. And uh, the refuge has been a very important uh, habitat for, uh, for waterfowl and their migration. And uh, the sportsmen here really uh, use this area to, uh, you know, to uh, hunt waterfowl, which is a, a wildlife dependent activity and something the Fish and Wildlife Service you know, totally supports. I actually find them running into fishermen out here. What are they going after? What's the big sell here? This is a real popular spot for, uh, for surf fishing, and uh, they're going after number one species is the uh, striped bass. And uh, the salt marsh acts as a nursery for striped bass, for a lot of fin fish, in fact. And uh, that's another thing that is, uh, is one of the most important things uh, salt marsh serves is as a nursery for fin fish and shellfish. So we talked about the, uh, the fishermen. We also have uh, shell fishermen out here that dig clams, which is an important activity for the clammers and for folks that like to eat clams. And these are sustainable uh, activities, as long as you, you know, we provide a healthy, healthy environment, a healthy habitat. We typically see Phragmites c coming in from the upland, uh, invading from that drier or, or fresher upland edge, and making its way into the marsh. Uh, Great Marsh is different. Uh, can, can you address that? Well, you're right. You're absolutely right. I mean, you see it on the upland edges because of the fresh water that, that is, uh, you know, coming off uh, impervious surfaces and other areas diluting the, uh, the salt water, so it gets a foothold there. And then you, we're finding it out here in the open salt marsh, which is uh, unusual. But there are areas where all you see for, m for miles is Phragmites, and uh, those areas, I don't think, you know, they're beyond help. There are other areas all over the East Coast that uh, you know have these situations. Could you talk a little bit about uh, 
what some of the longer term solutions are, perhaps how salinity plays a role on this landscape? Yeah, I think no one knows better than you, Greg, what salinity is, is, uh, is able to do and not do out here. And I think, uh, like I said earlier, you know, what we're doing is, is a short term control effort. Uh, I hope we're not you know, doing the same thing uh, 25 years from now and spraying these, these stands of Phragmites. Uh, I hope by then that we've come to a longer term solution, which is self-sustaining. And, and one way uh, that we're looking to, uh, to approach that is, is by doing some modeling, working with the Corps of Engineers and working with uh, academia and modeling some of the uh, activities that take place out here. Salinity, uh, different, the different hydrodynamics that go on out here in the salt marsh. And uh, some of the things we've identified are uh, the, the, uh, constrictions. I mean, the constrictions are probably the number one reason why uh, you know, salinity isn't uh, what we think it should be out in some of these northern portions. And also uh, freshwater runoff from the mainland. Uh, we're getting you know, uh, runoff from uh, impervious surfaces uh, and, and, and all sorts of things like that that are contributing to the lower salinity levels. So if we can uh, figure that part out, I think maybe we could do something with a longer term solution. Um, this is such an important area for a number of reasons that we've already talked about that, you know, this area is, is certainly worth protecting. Uh, number one, it's a national wildlife refuge and, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to protect it and uh, we're going to do everything we can, but we can't do it alone. We're going we're gonna to need help from, uh, you know, the community and hopefully we'll come to that long-term solution someday. I think we have a really good model, working model here and it all stems from the uh, partnerships and the uh, uh, ability to work with other groups and uh, agencies and non-government organizations. I think that's key. That's the key. Uh, if, if anyone wants to take, take away from this, that's the message, is to work with your partners and work with others. There's a lot of people out there that care. Thanks so much, Frank, for taking the time, and, and thanks to you for watching Danger in the Reeds. I'd like to also thank you folks. Uh, uh, it, it's all, it's all, all of us together, working together to try to uh, you know, control these, these invasive plants and to protect this, this wonderful habitat. Thank you very much. <laughs>